And that if you would go to the majority places where Jews decided to live, which is North America, which is the majority, some places in Europe and Australia, South Africa, but you see that the majority of the places of where the Jewish nation, after the Holocaust, decided to stay, was good for them. It looked like on the surface that everything is fine. Now, everybody is in a state, Jews and non-Jews are in a state of, wait a minute, this is an Asaf walking in front of us. Asaf is the, representing the force of evil. The forces of evil are descendants of Asaf. How they spread around end up coming to, to Germany, to Germania, the Aryan race, later on into Persia, to Iran, and so forth. We thought that everything was good. Now we're in a state of a situation that an Asaf is walking in front of me, and there's a good situation of annihilation. Now, I'm not talking right now the ones who have their heads stuck in the ground. Unfortunately, there are many people who are living in some type of bubble that everything's going to be fine. In half a year, we're going to get vaccinated and the corona is going to be behind us and we're going back to normal, right? Everything's going to be back to normal. You have to be a complete ignorant to think that there's going to be a solution that we're going to go back to how it was. Because even hypothetically, not that I support it in any type of a way, but let's say hypothetically, right? All the world will get vaccinated with the magical vaccine that's going to save the human race. And who says that everything's going to go back to normal? You already see with your own eyes that they're telling you, you want to eat in a restaurant? Get vaccinated. You want to fly on a plane? You have to get vaccinated. So that's not a regular normal. It's a new reality. doesn't matter right now if you agree with it or not. It's a new reality. So either way you're looking at it, and Asaph is coming in front of us. Some people choose to stick their head in the ground and to say it's totally fine. Everything will be okay. So unfortunately, some people will choose to stick their head in the ground. You know, I cannot teach anybody anything. But I can only teach people how to think. That's it. You want to accept what I say? Don't accept me, other people, anyone that sees the truth and wants to share it. You cannot teach other people certain things. You can teach them how to think for themselves. 99.9% .9 of the population of the world don't think for themselves. Most people are sheep. They have to be told what to do. Whether you accept it or not, whether you agree with it or not, or whether you see it or not, there's great judgment upon us. And Hashem is telling us, I had it up to here. Start changing your way. You do a lot of bad. At some point, the Kadosh Baruch says, you're crossing too much lines. This is the approach of Rashi. No, you do too much bad. I'm going to give you a slap to your face, and it's good for you because you're going to wake up and change your behavior. And right now the situation is, is that the force of evil is coming to overpower the good and to annihilate them. So the forces of evil right now, call it a government, call it whatever you want. Call it by its name, not by its name, it's irrelevant. But you can clearly see that the force of evil and darkness is trying to annihilate the force of good. And again, you can use any term you want, population control, annihilation, vaccinate everybody, it's irrelevant because not everybody sees eye to eye. But the reality is that we are facing annihilation any, any way you're looking at it. Should I stress? No. Should I be depressed? No. Why should I be depressed? What good would it do if I be depressed? Should I lose hope? Why would I lose hope? At the end of the day, it's all the orchestra of the Kadosh Baruch, the master of the universe is preparing it all. Only to destroy the evil. You can pray for the evil to be destroyed. It has nothing to do with you. That's Hashem's turf. That's Hashem says, that's for me. I waited 4,000 years to get rid of the evil. Now it's the time for me to, to place my vengeance. I do it. It's not going to be you. This is only the Kadosh Baruch. This is the Kadosh Baruch who's final, final fight. He's going to come and fight for us. Yeah, Sit back, buy a lot of popcorn, and enjoy the show. Why stress over what you see in front of your eyes? If you're constantly looking at the fake news that is being fed to you, then you'll be stressed. And under fear, what's going to happen? What's going to be tomorrow? What's going to be in a month? It's, it's, it's a waste of time. This is nothing to, you have nothing in our hands here. You pray yeah. to Hashem and saying, listen, we know it's going to have to be bad. I know that people are saying, I agree with you that the redemption is coming. But maybe it should come with mercy and love. And this is what I wish for too. Don't think that I'm praying every, every day for Armageddon. I'm also praying that it should be with chesed and rachamim, with mercy and kindness and love. But either way you're looking at it, in order to move into a new beginning, the old reality has to be destroyed. Has to be a destruction. Any way you're looking at it. We're just asking the destruction should not be so uh, big. But why do you think that the mind of the evil is to create one government, one world government? Because that's the reality. How can Mashiach control if there's going to be governments? So they're actually doing the job for Mashiach. Let's destroy all the governments. 
better, better them doing it than the Mashiach coming and doing it. Either way, we're not going to have any more governments anymore. There's going to be a king to the entire world. And all the nations will have to bow down to the same king. There's going to be one king and one government. The government is going to be called a Sanhedrin, a Malchut. So I'm going to be a, a, a president and a prime minister. We're going to have a king and Mashiach is for the rest of the world. It's not for just for the Jews. That's a misconception. People think Mashiach is for the Jews. Mashiach is for the entire world. He's going to be the king of the world. And now what we're seeing in front of our eyes is Hashem doing it in His kind way that it looks like darkness is becoming stronger and even becoming stronger. It's darkness uh, diminishing. The evil is diminishing. If you look at every little thing that happens here, everything that happens, that's really preparing the world for a much better place. A messianic era. But there's going to have to be destruction. Either way you're looking at it, and destruction is always not so nice. But we can't avoid the reality. It has to come. The slap has to come down to the face. Then at least it should be like this and not. It's all an attitude. If the punch has to come, at least it shouldn't be so strong. So of course we have to pray to the Kadosh Baruch Hu. This is the main lesson what I need to take from that. Is that you can't fight any government. Petitions are worthless. The demonstrations are worthless. It's all nonsense. You can't do anything. Of course, I'm not telling you to be sitting ducks, but to promote violence or anything, it's not going to work. It's way, way stronger than us. Of course, we have to be united. Of course, we have to practice kindness and love and charity. But to start to think you can go against the government? You can't go against Even the government is, is, is manipulated. Can you think you can go against anything? You know what a lot of people stress over? That they don't have any control. Don't worry, you're going to lose even more control. The point is that Hashem is trying to bring you to a situation that exactly what our sages said 25 years ago, we have nobody to count on but the master of the universe. This is how the tracted Sota finishes. We have nobody to trust. Hashem is already breaking our reality that you know that you have zero control. Not on your livelihood, not on your anything. You can't count on the government, you can't count on, on the police, you can't count on anyone. You can only count on the master of the universe. So Hashem is breaking the rules of the world. So you will humble yourself. But you understand, it's all in the hands of the Kadosh Baruch Hu. So I have to be on the side of the Kadosh Baruch Hu. I have to be on the side of Hashem, do what Hashem wants me to do. Not to chas v'shalom, uh, go the complete other direction. But the conclusion here that the only thing that is really what? left for us to do, pray, pray to the Kadosh Baruch Hu. Why? To change the decree, to sweeten the judgment. And don't think it doesn't work. The prayers are so powerful that we can change the judgment. Judgment cannot be nullified, it cannot be canceled. In Hebrew, say, you cannot cancel or overwrite the decree, but you can move it. That's what we pray on Yom Kippur, on the holiest day of the Day of Atonement. We say that prayer and charity and repentance, they move away the evil of the decree. You can't cancel it because if we do something, there's going to be a prosecution. But we can definitely push it away. And that's only in the power of our prayer. Now I can tell you already, people are depressed. I guarantee to you, pray, you'll see you're feeling much more cheerful and happy. People are worried, they have anxiety, pray, you'll feel much better. You have problems with your livelihood, problems with anything. You see that all the Torah, there was a problem, there was a prayer. Sarah and Avram couldn't have children, they prayed. Yitzchak and Rivka couldn't have children, they prayed. The power of our mouth is how we sweeten the judgment and change things. So there's no place to fall into sadness and despair because either way you're looking at it, you have zero control. Better already to humble yourself in front of the master of the universe. To fall into fear or anything, Hashem runs the show. You have nothing to be afraid of. The Yetzer Ara, the descendants of Esav, Amalek, the evil forces, call it however you want. Their agenda is to make you under stress and fear. Because when you are, you are in fear, you easily can be controlled. When they asked one of the Nazi officers in the Nuremberg trial, how were you able to do such a thing? I can, we cannot understand how you can program an entire army to do such atrocities. He says, very simple, fear. You put fear on people, they do what you tell them. That's what's going on right now, exactly in our generation. Everybody's under fear. A virus is going to kill everybody! People are running in the streets in fear. You fall to fear, then you'll be affected by it. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says, Mishim fachad me'echad, lo fachad me'afechad. If you're afraid of the one, you're not going to be afraid of anything. If you're not afraid of the one, the master of the universe, you'll be afraid of everything that moves. You have to completely disconnect yourself from the idea of fear. What am I going to be afraid of? 
It's as, as if I have control. I have control of anything. I have control of something. But the only way how I can change a little bit of the reality is pray to the master of the universe. Whether it's from the text or whether it's with your own words, you pray. It's the only way. That's how we sweeten the judgment. That's how we sweetening the situation. But don't fool yourself that it's all going to come smooth with, the, with the, a lot of confetti in the air. And no, no, the redemption is not coming like that. It's going to come with a, with, a, with a show and a half. The production that we're about to see is way bigger than what you can imagine. It's better to prepare already now so you're not going to lose your mind when you see it. But it's happening. Don't think it's not going to happen. Either way you're looking at it, it's going to come with a show and a half. Finally, after 3,000 years, the master of the universe is going to show his face again in this world. This time it's going to be the big show, the showdown. It's about to happen. Fasten your seatbelts and get ready. And the only way to get ready is if you connect yourself to the master of the universe. And you fear him. You don't fear humans. So what we want to take from that is how powerful is our prayer. Don't dis discount your prayer. And you know how you see how powerful our prayers are? That the forces of evil, what are they doing? Shutting down the place of worship. One of the first things that got shut down. How come you can have rallies and demonstrations? Ah, demonstration is fine to have 2,000 people. But to have 50 people in a synagogue, you can't? You have to read between the lines. Asaf knows exactly what are the weak points, what are the weak links. And when you go after the weak link, then you break the chain. You have to open your eyes and see what's going on. So they're going to stop us from praying? They're not going to stop me from praying. That's our power. That was always our power. Our power is in our mouth. So don't desecrate that power. Don't lie. Don't slander. Don't gossip. This is the, I'm damaging the tool now, which with I can fight. This is a very powerful tool. What goes in and what goes out. That's what we need to strengthen. But our power is in our prayers. And we have to pray to the master of the universe. Day and night. And not to chas v'shalom. Discount the power of my prayer. Don't think that your prayer is worthless. And if you don't know how to pray. Sometimes just reading from the holy text of the Torah. Is, is a prayer. It's also a prayer. And if that's also not so easy. You know, everybody has to pray. Then read to Elim. Day and night. That's really our, our exit. That's how we can get out of it. To a point that we're not getting rid of the judgment. People are asking, what can we do to stop this madness? Nothing. You can't. Leave it to the master of the universe. It's his show. It's his final maneuver. You can't do nothing. Sit back, relax, focus on acts of kindness, focus on elevating yourself and refining yourself. Don't fall into sadness, depression, arguments, disagreements. See the reality in front of your face. You can't do nothing. You can pray to the master of the universe. And by the way, Judaism teaches that prayer is not me just asking, please, please help me. That's not prayer. I mean, it is. But prayer, there's shevach, praising the master of the universe. That's a prayer. There's hodaya, thanking the Kadosh Baruch, thanking the master of the universe. That's also a prayer. Just say thank you every half an hour. Thank you. Thank you. That's also prayers, by the way. You don't have to sit and cry all day long in front of a wall. So we have to apply that, I guarantee to you, that the redemption will come sweeter, will come faster, will come nicer, with more mercy, with more love. Bezalel Hashem, we should all experience it to see with our own eyes that the redemption and the entire change of the world is going to come in a peaceful way, in a nice way, and Bezalel Hashem should all marry to see it very soon with our own physical eyes.